most important moments of the evening when we honour the absolutely the greatest in our craft. It's a great honour for the Kennedy Foundation to welcome News Corp Australia and the Daily Telegraph as sponsors of the award for Outstanding Lifetime Achievement. Since the Kennedys introduced this award back in 2013, recipients have included the late Harry Potter, who became a Telegraph Chief of Staff before heading into television. In 2014, the title went to the former Telegraph journalist, Philip Cornford. The next year, former Telegraph rugby league writer and author of the Daily Telegraph, Ian Heads, won the award before former Daily Telegraph pictorial editor, the late John Smith was honoured in this very room. And of course, many of you were here last year when the legendary Australian journalist, broadcaster and former editor of the Daily Telegraph, Ita Buttrose, was recognised at the Kennedys for her monumental career. Are you ready to hear who it is this time? Um, before I do that, I'd say it is only fitting then that the News Corp Australia's Director of News, Rowan Sullivan, joins me on stage this evening to present this award. So when I first began on 60 Minutes, which is more than eight years ago now, I was truly humbled by the talents and achievements of those who had gone before me. The bar was high, dauntingly so. So it won't be hard for you to appreciate the great honour I have this evening in revealing the recipient of the 2018 Kennedy Award for Lifetime Achievement. She is a woman who changed the face of journalism in this country. She inspired myself to become a journalist and many others in this room. Take a look. Is it possible to see my father's brother? Perhaps the greatest gift that the new president and the new government have given Czechs is the right to say exactly what they believe. Yana, one word that speaks volumes about a time when the goggle box was a lot smaller and more powerful than it is today. Television was king, Yana was queen. We doted on her, and a host of female reporters imitated her almost to her last breath. That your own display of emotion on this was just, in fact, a display, if this is your attitude now. That is a despicable and contemptible observation, and I, ref I find your observation repugnant in the extreme. You're a little devil, you are. And I'm sorry if you're upset about the questions, but it seems to me that I'm not doing my job if I have an opportunity you, to speak you to You have gone out of your way to ask the questions I told you not to ask. You get stresses and strains in these relationships. If I went under a bus, then I'm gone, and I think Paul Keating would make an admirable Prime Minister. When are you going to be Prime Minister? When, when Bob's good and ready to call it quits. In Yana's time at 60 Minutes, she was affectionately referred to as the perfumed steamroller always impeccably polite and poised in her interviews, but determined to get the truth no matter how much she had to battle for it. Tough, honest and charming. Yana was never afraid to ask the hard questions. Where you paid, personally intervened and paid out $400,000 to Sir Joe Bielke peterson were you trying to exert influence there? Uh, it was a million they were asking. We got it down to 400,000. The Queensland police force is not corrupt. Never took a cent? Not a cent. You've got your foot on the sticky paper. You're trying to make the most of it, to make your sort of reputation and name and get people to look at it. But then I wouldn't expect anything else from you, Yana, by your record, as I've seen it recently. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, you work it out for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> She would go on to become the nation's most admired current affairs presenter. And even today, she serves as a role model for millions of young Australian women. Well, why don't you read it out so the public let's, can hear Let's it. establish what, what point we're making, Mr Packer. You, are, you call it the big lie. Yana was a newsreader, a young newsreader in Melbourne, uh, when somebody suggested I take a look at her as the woman in 60 Minutes, because, of course, we had three men. Uh, and I wanted a woman. I thought it was time for a woman on the, uh, uh, in the team. Last night, John Lennon was tragically gunned down in New York. As the guiding force behind the Beatles, he played a major part in changing the face of modern music. One of her most dangerous stories was in Libya, 
she did an interview with Gaddafi, the dictator, and he decided that uh, he would like a private <laughs> conversation with him. Uh, our producer at the time said, absolutely not, unless she does the interview with the full camera crew and everything. Uh, and there was a standoff at first uh, that she was, uh, the crew was warned that they wouldn't be allowed to leave Libya. Do you view this situation as critical? Is the PLO itself in Lebanon in a critical position? I don't think so. Uh, Anthony McClellan was the uh, producer and, and uh, just said, no, uh, we'll, we'll report this uh, all over the world. And uh, she got out. It's just somebody who uh, is genuinely uh, so interested in other people uh, that she fits in wherever she is. She, she, there's nothing snobbish about her or uh, she's she just a, 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 an honest person uh, doing an honest day's job. And if you ever decide to get into any uh, interspecies dating, I'm here, and, 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 and you're very attractive for a human being. A great guy. Here he is. This, this, is, uh, this is a rare treat. How are you enjoying married life? Fantastic. Yana, just in case you've forgotten what you look like, here you are. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, Yana Vitz. Thank you so very much for that um, honour and welcome. Um, I suspect it won't surprise um, many of you in the room when I say that there's something disturbing about receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> it is uh, actually not the honour and the accolade that comes first to mind. Um, it is the alarming possibility that it is, in fact, all over. Um, the lifetime, that is. Um, you know, there you were one minute thinking that you had a way to go yet and uh, the good people at the Kennedys um, inform you otherwise. <laughs> and I have to say, given the, the quality of uh, the people in the room this evening, you even start to wonder, has one of the gun investigators here penetrated the government's My Health website? to discover something that, you know, even I don't know to this point. Um, I have to say that the initial uh, alarm has given way to wondering what the hell I've done to deserve this. Uh, the TV past so colourfully displayed there on that, in that video is, I have to be perfectly honest with you, um, something of a blur. Um, I have had more than a few uh, arguments, debates about the television stories and interviews uh, that I've done, and not necessarily for the kind of reasons that you might expect. Uh, for instance, someone recently told me that he recalled my interview with Christine Keeler, the uh, notorious Cold War British call girl. I swore I'd never met her. <laughs> the other person was adamant. I still don't know if I met Christine Keeler, um, because alas, on this momentous question, the archive is silent. Not so in the case of the uh, great Peter Ustinov, the writer, actor, raconteur, polymath. Years ago, when I was asked uh, by a viewer how I'd found Peter Ustinov, I said I didn't find him. Um, but when the facts change, so must we. Eventually, when I was uh, presented with a video of an interview I had apparently done some years back with Peter Ustinov, I changed course and began telling people that I found Ustinov entirely forgettable. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a lie. It wasn't a lie. Um, look, I comfort myself with the thought, seriously, that these, mind, these people, some of these interviewees, slip from the mind uh, because of the rich field that I've been so lucky to graze in uh, for all these years. 
you know, all those stellar, brilliant, talented, captivating, crooked, shonky, self-promoting, evil, and saintly people uh, that I've spoken to, so many of them. It's like a magnificent chorus line, and my excuse is that you can't be expected to remember every single one of them. Today, as a freelance writer, I'm still asking people what they do, what motivates them to do what they do, and it continues to be highly uh, satisfying work. I have to say what's also satisfying uh, to come around to why we're all gathered here tonight is to see and be reminded of some of the wonderful work that's being done by you people uh, in this room. It's great to see some of the colleagues nominated for some of their outstanding achievements. Maintaining a, a clear voice amid the cacophony of social media and the brawling in the civic square is, as we all know, not easy. Uh, to take just one example of the kind of subjects that are covered, the sort of attention that's been paid, for instance, to China and its influence on this country and our region, that, dare I say it, is important work. So uh, really, uh, aside from being overwhelmed at what I've just seen on the screen, and you're a very warm welcome, I want to say congratulations to all of you for all the work that you do. I want to thank uh, the Kennedys for, uh, well, giving me this, this award. Um, uh, you know, it's quite stunning. Thank you for the recognition. Thank you not so much for this reminder of my mortality. And uh, I suppose I do really want to thank all those who placed their faith in me, an outsider, a rookie, those people who gave me a chance and who taught me things. I learnt things from them. They were valuable. They're too numerous to mention, but I thank them very much. And once again, thank you for your warm welcome tonight.